everybody in it's another edition of the nice job podcast hope you are doing well and thank you so much for joining us here today to listen to the conversation make yourself a better business owner or at least just be a part of our community here. So we are so glad you're here. And if you're joining us for the first time, a special welcome to you. You picked a very good episode to dive in. Excited to speak with my guest, um, who I'm learning more about. We had a little conversation before we uh, you know, flipped on the record here. Uh, and, and I know this one's going to be a fun one. And you know I like to mention this, the notepad episodes where there's going to be a lot to kind of take down. This one for sure is going to be a notepad episode. So I hope you're ready to dive in and engage. And if you have any comments or anything like that, paste them below. If you want to share, you want to like, we would appreciate that. But at the very least, just give us your attention. We're going to try to teach you something today. My guest is the CEO of Workies. If you haven't heard of them, check them out for sure. Uh, the whole team, uh, really passionate about what they do. They absolutely can help you here. We are proud at Nice Job uh, to work with them on capacity. It is Didi Azaria, the CEO. Didi, thank you so much for joining us on the Nice Job podcast. Thank you for having me, Sean. How are you today? I'm I'm really good, uh, especially we're in the early stages of, of 2021. Uh, you, you're starting to see some people kind of get out of the, the the funk of 2020 and really start to progress forward. Uh, and you know, entrepreneurs, you can't keep them down. Um, we're going to dive into a lot of topics uh, revolving around that. But first, Didi, I want to kind of learn a little bit more about you. Um, I know you have an interesting story, kind of a diverse background, so it might be kind of hard to figure out where to start. Um, but but high level, what, what's let's start with the what's the one thing that someone needs to know about you uh, and, and how you became uh, an entrepreneur on this journey? The one thing, well, I, I don't think we can <laughs> pinpoint one thing, but... Uh, I mean, I started my entrepreneurial life, I mean, maybe 20, 25 years ago. Um, I've been into an elite unit and basically I've, I've changed the entire uh, mindset of the unit. Uh, m maybe saying digitizing it in many ways. And this is the first time I identified uh, the entrepreneurial spirit within me. Uh, I served for three and a half years. Uh, and then I, I mean, after I, I finished doing that, I started exploring the world and I found myself in, in at Sherman Ox being a locksmith for, uh, for uh, uh, some time. Um, I mean, taking, uh, taking my experience from, from uh, being a soldier to, uh, to the field helped me a lot. Uh, it gave me a lot of, uh, uh, I guess, it gave me a lot of uh, uh, discipline and you need a lot of discipline in this business. You need to get organized, you need to be on time. It's all those things that you do in the army and you hate them. Suddenly you realize how important they are in, in, you know, in the day-to-day -day life, specifically ones uh, facing uh, customers. Um, I, I wasn't such a good uh, service guy, to be honest. <laughs> I wasn't that successful. Uh, but I took the experience with me to the future, and apparently that's what brought me here uh, to speak with you today. Um, today I'm running a company called uh, Work Is. Work Is Easy. That's how we uh, like to call it. Nice. So life's hard, work is easy. Um, we are a communication and field service uh, software. So uh, we're focusing on the communication layer where basically every job starts with a phone call, an email, a, a web form. And we uh, take a, a deep route on, on uh, how we connect the communication to the job itself. Uh, we might want to talk about it later, but in general, uh, that's what makes us uh, really unique. And that's why, what our, why, why our customers like us so much. Yeah, and uh, having that that background, uh, you know, coming from not, not just you know, service in the military, but you know, talk about service as a locksmith, um, an entrepreneur and a, a soldier have to have a good bit of of self discipline because it's almost constant challenge, one after another after another. Um, I I have not served uh, in the military, so so I'm definitely asking you to kind of speak from from your experience there. But there's also a hierarchy of you talk about your discipline, but uh, of leadership when it comes to, to being in the military. And as an entrepreneur, sometimes that can all be stripped away. You can become a, a solo business owner. Um, is there something that you've kind of took from the, the highly disciplined, but perhaps more structured 
you know, military service sort of uh, accountability, leadership, that discipline era. And how are you able to translate that into kind of being a solo entrepreneur? Because I think for some people that might come from structured environments, the big fear of being a solo entrepreneur is like, well, I don't have anyone above me. Like it's it's all on me. And we saw that really come in in 2020 is the solo entrepreneurs as the world started changing kind of dealt with the most adversity. Can you just talk a bit about that transition from a, a very structured, but you know, maybe some bureaucracy to kind of it being on your own? How, how was that for you, that transition? So the, the place I was coming from had a lot of structure, but in the same time, it understood uh, pretty early in the days, I understood pretty early in the days that structure have its, has its benefits but only while it's uh, providing with enough freedom within the structure. So these are the boundaries, uh, but in, in, within the boundaries, like do whatever you want. And this provides you with two things as, as an entrepreneur, as also as a soldier, it allows you to think uh, uh, more openly. It's, uh, I mean, uh, I would say re-innovate some of the stuff that uh, doesn't make any sense as long as it's within the boundaries. And it creates, again, ownership and accountability at the same time. Because if I'm changing the, my, my own set of rules here, I'm accountable for this uh, change. But the ability to change them is basically the, the ownership. And, and if, you know, if, if we'll take it to the field, to the field service, I mean, there are a set of rules that you're following. I mean, you, you, you need to uh, uh, get to the customer on time. Otherwise, they will not be uh, that happy. I mean, maybe there are, of course, more, uh, 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 you know, uh, better examples for that. But within all these rules, you can innovate a lot. You can change the, the you can bend a little bit, you know, the, the rules to make customers happy and make your life much easier. Yeah. So um, do you think, because um, you talked about it, it's, you touched on it a bit, like making the, the customer, like you show up on time that, that makes customer happy. That's one touch point uh, of the entire customer journey, you know, because before that, even before you show up to do the service, you're probably taking, you know, this, the schedule, then you're doing the sales, like kind of working your way backwards. So a customer success strategy and kind of every point in the journey, making sure that your team is kind of serving that customer and, and is able to do it. There was a structure that started to be laid out. 2020 happens and all of a sudden we're seeing changes from everything. Rules aren't just being bent, some of them almost have to be broken. You know, there was no uh, you know, virtual estimates, uh, the, the ability to have online uh, connectivity. You know, if, if you only had a quasi-functional website at the beginning of 2020, that, that was, you were uh, up the wrong creek uh, to put it clean enough for the podcast to say. Um, when it comes to a customer success strategy, we've talked a lot about how to kind of set it up, but I feel like the game has kind of shifted and things have kind of changed. Before we get into what new pivots, what do you think has always remained? What is one thing the pandemic almost hasn't touched when it comes to making sure that you're successful in that regard? The human touch in many ways, specifically in field service, uh, cannot be replaced by computers. I mean, it's great to have Zoom, it's great to have phone calls, but eventually, I don't know if we can call it a handshake, but a handshake is, is crucial for, for making a good business. And the handshake can only be a smile or, or somebody that looks in, in your eyes. Um, so this is, this is crucial. Uh, we will never, at least for, uh, for the, the next decade or two, will miss this uh, uh, communication there. I mean, we need to see each other, we need to feel each other in some way in order to trust each other and everything is built on trust. I mean, if you get into my house, I need to trust you. Uh, and uh, I mean, the, this, this is the most crucial thing I think that will never change. And yet that's, it's funny because we lost that, that human element out of necessity, you know? I mean, it, it was a health crisis, um, but the feeling never went away. You know, you, you talk about trust, um, you know, obviously we talk about a lot, a lot about reputation, uh, on this podcast, when when you're trying to instill that outwardly, what what is like? How do you replace that feeling, either in a digital sense, or how do you make sure that you never lose that? Is it by making sure that even if you're using automation or even if you're using tools to make sure that it kind of has the human voice? Like, how do you make sure that you, if you have to make changes, so you know you're working in a situation where, you know, like hey, you talk about the smile, like we're wearing masks. 
mask. Sometimes you can't even see the smile. How do you make sure that the human element remains if you start to digitize some things? It's a good question. I mean, uh, prior to my uh, uh, work at work is uh, I built a multi-billion dollar company called Sisense. And, and part of what I was doing over there is basically handling uh, hundreds of sales people all around the world. They did most of their sales over the phone. I always mention to them, people can hear you smile. It's very basic. If you smile, people actually can, listen, can hear that. It's the same case, right? So somebody calls for, for uh, help. I don't know, my pipe was broken. I am, I'm out of electricity here, okay? You need to uh, welcome them with a smile, even if they don't see your face. It's the same thing with a mask, okay? So if you if you knock on somebody's door to, to do some sort of a service, train your technicians, or if you're the, the, the person who's doing the job, just smile and do it authentically because it will create a much better service. And we clearly see businesses today um, uh, uh, getting more tips just because they're providing uh, a more human service. And human service is uh, really caring about the person that you serve and not just caring about fixing their door, their pipe, or their electricity. Yeah, I mean, a, a empathetic nature becomes comforting because the one thing uh, when, when I talk about, it usually comes in the, in the avenue of company culture, is in the service industry especially, you are going to be solving problems for people. And sometimes it's a major problem, but sometimes to them it's a major problem, but to you it's a quick fix. But that empathetic nature to understand that, you know, it's not you coming in to save the day, you know, you don't want to get that hero complex, but it is that 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 communal connection. Um, and creating those moments, I think, leads to obviously when, when the job goes well, um, you know, that like such a, a feeling that you want to capitalize on, which is, you know, we at Nice Job talk about, you get the reviews, you kind of, you bring it back through. How about when the job doesn't go well? How do you, I mean, are, are there are there strategies or are there uh, structures that you need to have in place when it comes to, like, I call it solving the problem within the solving? You know, it's things like, you know, at Nice Job, we have a customer success team that helps and they support issues or things like that. I think that's a role not just generally overlooked, but sometimes that business owners struggle with because, they kind of want to always think I've trained well, things are going to go well. Um, how crucial is it to make sure that you have a structure in place to solve things when it doesn't go well? It's, it's, it, there is a thumb rule here, right? So uh, uh, in, in any support case or any, any fix that doesn't go well, uh, there are two edges. Uh, you can choose as a service person which edge to, to take, which, which extreme to take. The two extremes are, uh, are that's not a big deal, or of course, the other hand is, is this is a very big deal. If you as a service person or as a dispatcher, doesn't matter, are going to take this is not a big deal with the client, guess what he's going to do? He's going to take it's a very big deal, right? Yeah. On the other hand, if you're going to take it seriously, even if it's a minor, tiny thing, guess what will happen? They will take it. Oh no, that not, don't worry about that. It's always the case, and it always works like magic, right? If you're gonna say, ah, oh, forget about it. It's not only a little bump on your door. They're gonna take it really seriously. But if you're gonna say, oh, I'm so sorry for that. I haven't seen that. Let me see what I can do about it. They will clearly understand that there is someone that is responsible. Remember about uh, accountability. Mm -hmm. This is where accountability comes into play. You came to do a service, be accountable for that, and take responsibility for whatever damage you did or didn't do. And suddenly your client takes the other approach, which is, you know what, it's not a big deal. Thank you very much for your uh, service. Yeah, it's almost like they, they reprioritize it in their head. Um, and sometimes what we see when it comes to customer feedback is the more detailed reviews tend to tell a bit of a story. And, and the story, always tends to include, these are my expectations, and the good ones are, here's how they exceeded it. And the bad ones are, here's how they fell underneath. And sometimes clients might have outrageous expectations. You know, it sounds funny to say, but they, they might be expecting magic. But I think they do understand that, that you're kind of a, a, a real person. Um, one thing I want to talk about in particular, um, 
as we kind of come, uh, it, it seems weird to say post pandemic, obviously it's kind of still being in it. Um, but, you know, hopefully, you know, we're on the, the latter side of it, or the very least we've learned enough that kind of, if, uh, you know, things start to change again, uh, we're ahead. Is there something that has now changed that you think will, will never go back? You know, a lot of people have talked about uh, with marketing, you know, really becoming digitized, uh, you know, will clip flyers, will a lot of those things that already were kind of a little passe when it came to the environmental impact. But now, you know, th there was a time where I was quarantining my mail because I just didn't know. Um, is there something uh, from the old world that's that's not going to continue, in your opinion? Uh, yeah, I believe that many of the uh, on-site estimates uh, will, will go forever. I mean, some of them needs to be done. But many of them are just redundant. I mean, just driving to uh, driving an hour on the four or five uh, back and forth, just to give somebody an estimate on, you know, uh, moving uh, uh, a house is, is redundant. I mean, in any case, what you do, you go from one room to another, you take a quick look, you, you do quick estimate, and, and uh, you go back home, and, and and that's it. Whether you got the job or not, you just missed three hours uh, three, uh, uh, work time. Uh, we clearly see in one of our biggest clients, that's what they do. I mean, they, they are one of the biggest uh, uh, moving companies in, in, uh, in East, uh, East, uh, the East Coast. They basically changed the entire business model towards uh, what we do with, with the Zoom integration. So virtual estimates are the thing right now. You don't like to see anybody because of the pandemic. Uh, you know what? We don't want to come to your house too for just for uh, uh, you know, an estimate. Just walk us through your house. We're going to give you an estimate. And it's only an estimate, right? If, if it's not the right thing to do, at least we, we give you a rough estimation. They save a lot of time like this. And, and believe it or not, customers are actually appreciating that. Nobody needs to come home. They can, I mean, they can do that on, on I wouldn't say in their underwear, but with their PJs. Yeah. <laughs> but they do. I mean, they don't need to host anybody. And, uh, and, and it's much easier for them. So anything that is, was digitized, uh, whether it's online payments, uh, virtual estimates, and there, there are more, uh, will definitely stay that way because it's just more convenient for customers. Uh, as, a, as a customer, I don't want to go back to the old days when somebody was knocking on my door and doing an estimate for an hour. Just take a quick video and that's it. Yeah, and digitizing that probably helps a bit more with general organization uh, for a business. Um, you know, we've all heard of the 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 lost invoice paper or, you know, the the thing on the the service professional's desk, and it's just it's a complete gong show. There's papers kind of everywhere, but kind of having everything organized, uh, you know, in the digital sense is, is good for kind of being able to go back and, and following, and obviously those additional touch points. But you have to think that also now. With so many people, you talked about, you know, sending video, we're seeing a big shift to mobile, more so than we ever had before. Um, and now, you know, the calling and texting and all the, that sort of, uh, you know, connection through the phone, the phone's kind of become our lifeline. Um, you know, managing those those calls and kind of prioritizing it seems like it's kind of a, a an extreme sort of deal, uh, or can be overcomplicated. Um, but I know you guys at Workies kind of, you kind of help manage that and all. I, I kind of want you to touch a bit on when it comes to coordinating your business through a digital platform, some of the bigger advantages of doing that. Because sometimes at the end of the day, people would like to go old school. And I saw a guy the other day as I was, I was walking uh, through the train there that still was rocking the three cell phones instead of having it come through. So I know he's answering three numbers. Can you just talk a little bit about, about making that shift and, and how much you actually can run through an organized system? So whether you're a smaller business or a larger business, larger businesses actually understand that pretty well. Uh, uh, but uh, let's talk, talk about the benefit of, of separating you know, personal and business. I mean, we all been in the same place. We started as a one-man show. Uh, we took our cell phone. I actually used pay phones <laughs> back in the days. Wow. So that was, that, that's a different story. That's, that's a story for a different day. But today we have cell phones. That, yes, our, our cell phone became our computer, basically. So customers are used to get us wherever we are. Uh, but, you know, God forbid we need to go to the toilet or just uh, need to be offline uh, for, for a few. Uh, this makes you unavailable. And that's not a good customer service. Customers today... Uh, call a business, they don't call you as a friend. 
if I'm calling my friend and he doesn't answer, that makes sense. But if I'm calling a business that there is no answer and, and it's like a website that you, you log into and, and uh, nothing is there, what is your gut feeling right now? My gut feeling is that this is not a real business. Same goes for a personal phone, okay? This is my cell phone and I probably will answer the same way to a friend or to a customer, meaning, hey, what's up? That's a friend and hi, this is Joe the Plumber. How may I help you? That's a business. Mm. Again, when you smile and when you have the right wording, this is exactly when we uh, uh, see uh, a real business or just somebody who's wannabe. So even if you just a wannabe, just act, you know, fake it till you make it. Yeah. Like, like a real business. And acting like a real business, meaning that if you go to the toilet and you cannot answer the phone, have a voicemail that is professional enough, like what, what, what part of what we offer, not just us, you know, many other uh, companies, but work is basically connected to the field service software, is that, hey, this is Joe the plumber. If you have an emergency, uh, uh, press one. Uh, if you want to leave us a message, press two. If you want to speak to support, press three. This already sounds like a, a more established business. Okay, and worst case, nobody can answer. You go to the voicemail. We send the uh, the plumber, the HVAC uh, person, uh, a text message about the description of the problem, and he can, you know, text them back or, or get back to them immediately. But this is how a real business works on a smaller scale, one man show, or on a uh, you know, fifteen or one hundred people. It's the same thing. Now, once a one-man show acts like a real business, guess what, guess what happened? He grows mm -hmm. because more people are wanting to work with him. This is, by the way, uh, due to what you guys do. I mean, a, a happy customer leaves reviews. More reviews bring more customers. And it's like, uh, you know, this is what we call an exponential growth. Even in a smaller business, you get more and more and more. And as many positive uh, reviews you're getting, okay, you're going to get more work. But... You need a system, and it doesn't matter which system you choose, but a system that can scale with you, with this success. Because if, if you're not going to do that, you're just going to grow and grow and grow. You're going to break. And in the breaking point, I mean, there is not going back. You're going to burn yourself and you don't want to do this job anymore. And customers will not want to work with you because you're going to miss jobs. You, you're not going to know their names. I mean, if, if I'm a returning customer, I, I would expect you to know that you worked for me before. Yeah, and that's and without, yeah. Go ahead, continue. Sorry. And without without a system that logs all these communications, without a system that logs the invoices and the previous jobs, or a system that basically identifies, oh, this is Sean, and I was uh, in his house uh, uh, two weeks ago, and I know it before I even answer. And this is the difference, by the way, with between a, a personal uh, cell phone and a system that can actually hold uh, on all the information about you as a client. And then I'm going to say, hey, Sean, uh, how are you today? And you will already understand that you're working with somebody that cares about you. I mean, I know it's, it sounds like bits and bytes, I mean, and tiny things that might not be so important. Believe it or not, it makes a, the difference between a bad review and a good, good review. Just by knowing the name of the person, I have a trick. I also remember, you know, not important uh, uh, items like name of the dog, the name of the wife, the name of the kid. And I'm going to say, Sean, and, and in, you know, in parentheses, he, uh, uh, he has, uh, I don't know, Biggie as, as the uh, name of his dog. I say, hey, Sean, how are you? How's Biggie today? And you know that I'm, I, I care about you. I'm doing authentically. I mean, this is what I like to do. But even if you don't do it authentically, uh, people will think, you know, feel that you care about them. Yeah. And I feel like that type of knowledge is always a plus. And, and even if it, there's a no net gain. So if, if for me, it's not important that you as my plumber know my dog's name. You know, I, like I'm just single mode. like, look, all I care about is that you come in at the right price and you get it done in under an hour. Right? That's all I care about. However, mentioning my dog and knowing that you care buys you a little bit of security if, hey, Sean, uh, like, I know you want to get, you know, the dog out for a walk real quick. It's just gonna take me an extra 10 minutes. I, you know, I really like, I apologize. And, like, almost that's what we talked about, that that problem comes up because you've done the small little things to make the customer feel really connected with you is that it buys you a little security when things maybe don't go as planned, you know, go a bit difficult, uh, you know, things of that. And 
a lot of those small notes, um, that sort of perception, I call it, of being able to, to understand it and pick up the small little things is huge for, for customer service, but can be hard to kind of keep together. And, and to your point, having something where every you know call that comes in and you're, you're, you're kind of tracking it, it's not going just to uh, the generic voicemail that comes with the phone, you know, it, it's, it's coming to something bigger. That makes it feel as a customer that I've hired like the solution that I'm not hiring someone that's going to try. I'm hiring someone that's going to solve. And that from, uh, you know, the reputation standpoint, that that's where you want to be. When you talk about, you know, people want to be able to kind of reach out and, and have connection. I, I'm interested to get your opinion on this because this is a question I, I've asked kind of a couple people to kind of want to dive in is we're slowly becoming very much a 24 hour culture. And, and we kind of expect things to always be available and we expect things to really come our way. And, and pandemic did shift that a bit. Um, but how do you as a business owner, if, if you have to, find that balance from being like, hey, I have my on time, like I have my business hours, but I'm still connected. Because the, the worst thing for me is if I call someone and, you know, you get them after they close and it feels like there's, there's no chance for a follow-up. So how do you as a business owner... Uh, or is there any tips or strategies that you would recommend for someone that might have that sort of anxiety of, look, I want to act like I'm the big guy that can be there, but I can't do 24 seven. How do I make my presence known even if I, I can't expand my business hours? So th there are a few uh, tricks to uh, to make it happen. I mean, the easiest one is just to, to buy uh, a service that, uh, just an answering uh, uh, service that book uh, notes. Um, it's some of them are more sophisticated and can actually you know control your uh, uh, your schedule, which is good. Uh, if you go that route, handle somebody. I mean, use somebody that can actually see your schedule and book specific uh, dates. Customers today want to know. I mean, want to at least uh, uh, give some kind of a range when they are available for you to come. Um, but it's not just that. I mean, many, many solutions today, like we, we introduced uh, a chatbot um, into our system. And a chatbot is basically 24 seven within your website, or I mean, assuming somebody called, you can basically send them a link to the chatbot. So, I mean, there are many ways of looking at it. And, and the chatbot, what, what basically, uh, the, its purpose basically is to be 24 seven available. Uh, whether you're in the, at the office, uh, next to your computer or not. It, it tries to uh, uh, entertain or basically ask basic questions uh, from the client where the client feels like somebody's actually uh, uh, needing their information. Is it an emergency or not? Where do you live? You know, first name, last name, etc. Uh, we added an additional ability, again, with communication in mind, where we understand that many people prefer a human touch we gave the dispatcher, the owner, or whoever in the business right now, the ability to interfere with the bot uh, uh, interaction. So basically in the middle, I mean, if you see that the customer is struggling or you actually, you, you can, you know, you can do a live uh, conversation with him, you can just jump in and, and, you know, continue the conversation from the bot and the bot will just uh, step back. So it's a nice bot. Uh, but if you're not, if it's the middle of the night, if you're busy in a job right now, the bot will take all information, including offering the right time for the service to be done. And this makes you, I mean, for, for, for consumers today, this is exactly how they expect you to, uh, to work. Because if you don't have it, you be, they're basically going to call somebody else. Even if you have an amazing reviews, I mean, they have a problem right now. They need a solution right now. I mean, I'm calling it the TikTok world. Uh, I'm not a big fan, but to be honest, I mean, we all like things to be right now and as short as possible. And if it's longer than that, we're just going to move to the next uh, clip. This is what's happening in TikTok. That's why it's so successful. Uh, the world is like that. We need fix, uh, quick fix. And we need, we need uh, more importantly, I think we need transparency. When are you going to come? Are you going to speak to me right now? I don't need just a voicemail, a simple voicemail. I need to know there is someone behind the scenes that actually took care of its operations and will be at the right time, at the right place. Uh, and when you work with systems like that, 
usually seems to be, at least from the consumer side, very organized and will probably do a professional job uh, at the job site. Man, that's, <laughs> I, I love the way that, that you phrase that is, is you, you said over and over, like, they just want to know, you know, and because that's often when, they're, when they have a problem, there's so many question marks around their head, the quicker you can start taking just some of those away. If someone's heard my problem, someone's scheduled me to try to get, uh, you know, my problem solved, that's going to go a long way uh, towards the success uh, for them, and then obviously for you as a business owner. You know what well. I hate most. You know what I hate most when I when I uh, I ask a service guy to uh, to tell me when they gonna arrive somewhere. You know they they tell me you know at, at a morning time sometime. So what do you mean yeah. sometime in the morning? Don't you care about my my uh, my time? Shouldn't yeah. your my time be more important than yours? And once you realize that as a service owner, as a, as a service business, you, you turn your entire business uh, to a better to a better place because you care about your consume your, your customers. They're what important, not your profit, not your uh, reviews. Reviews are a byproduct of a, of a of a transparent business of a better business, and they might forgive your maybe you know faults in some way. If you're going to be transparent from A to Z, but if you're not going to be transparent and you're going to do a tiny, uh, uh, I don't know, bump or whatever in, in, in the work, uh, they will not be so uh, forgiving. Yeah. I mean, tra transparency is a building block of trust, you know, it, it, and, and when you get there and as it's, it's hard to get full trust, you know, it's, it's, you, you can start to build it and it's got to grow. But it's something you got to nurture, but it's got to be something that is built on honesty and transparency. And if you're not doing that, it's going to be really hard to get true uh, trust in that sense. Uh, Didi, I, I feel like you and I could could talk on a, a variety of different things and kind of go back and forth. Um, I, I want to make sure that our uh, you know our episodes that we we give people a lot and fill that notebook. Um, so I have a feeling we're going to probably be inviting you back in, in some later seasons to kind of explore some more of your history. But in season two, I've been kind of ending every interview with, with one question uh, that I've asked all of our guests because we bring them in as experts. We bring them in because of diverse backgrounds, things like that. Uh, and they're sharing their knowledge, which, which we thank you for. But I also know that there's a lot uh, – or people like yourself, there's always something that you're working towards. So the question – uh, that I, I would like to end our, our conversation with today, which I've ended all the other ones with, is what is something that you don't know now that you are either working on or you are excited to find the answer to? And it, it, it doesn't even really have to be business specific, but I, I want to dive into that brain real quick. What's the one thing that you're like, you know what? I don't know everything about that yet, but I'm going to, or, or I want to, or that that's where I'm driving right now. Well, uh <laughs> I can take. I can answer in a philosophical way, or more into you know, uh, of uh, uh, more realistic way. Let, let's take the realistic approach because otherwise we're going to have another twenty minutes. Uh, <laughs> uh, I want to learn more about how uh, robots will change the industry. Uh, I believe that uh, we're going to see a lot of change in the next five to ten years. Many of the, I guess service uh, uh, works will will be done or will be held by uh, uh, robots of, of many kinds. I, I would call it, I mean, the, the home robot that cleans your, your carpets or whatever, it's gonna get much more sophisticated. And the question is how soon service people will, uh, will start using that. That's like, you know, it's your set of tools. Yeah. And will it make uh, us as service people, uh, uh, you know, with more superpowers? I mean, I don't need to uh, go down the, uh, this, the sewage. I just can send my robot. And I don't need to test my roof. I can just send my drone, right? It's all those things that will be more, I, at least, again, I don't know about it too much. But I think that diving deep into that will help the industry because we're going to provide more tools to these guys to handle these kind of, uh, I guess, uh, mini mini humans or whatever you can call them, bots, basically. Yeah. I mean, that's 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 really interesting. Uh, we talked about the correlation with, with home service professionals because you wonder if we might see the day where you know there's the service company that provides the the daily vacuum robot. But then can also, if it notices, uh, you know, different threading in a carpet or, you know, it identifies a stain that it, it can't handle on its own, 
kind of pings the service to let them know. You know, you talked about like uh, inspecting a roof or inspecting sewage. Like we already have these things uh, like monitors, but you wonder if it's like, hey, it's part of a service. We're going to make sure that this robot's going to handle it, your day-to-day -day maintenance. But when it reaches a problem, before you even are noticing it, before you worry about it, they're going to ping us and we're going to know to get in touch and say, hey, we identified – you know, uh, a little bit of problem with the roof or, hey, we, we our, our bot went through and realized that the pipe underneath your second bathroom there is, uh, you know, we're seeing a little wear. Um, because I think that's a service that people will love to sign up for, but the monitoring could be where the pivot comes in. So it's, that's really interesting. I never really thought about how, uh, you know, with the advancement of, of kind of robotic technology of how, you know, the home service professional, I don't think ever gets replaced, but how do they have to evolve and then bring that as part of their toolkit? So we will always need more service people. We're always lacking on that. I mean, yeah. we haven't spoken about the booming after the pandemic is over. I mean, there will be a boom and there will be lack of, of service people. Uh, but in, in, in the meantime, I mean, we see huge advancements in technology and I believe that we're gonna, call, we're gonna create su super uh, service people and it's just a matter of time. Yeah, you know what? I don't. Uh, I'll continue on for a little bit because I don't want to go by that real quick. I, I you mentioned that you you thought there's gonna be a boom of of service people as, as people come back. What? Why? Why do you think that? Any business that is closed right now, I mean, from hotel restaurants, and there are so many, unfortunately, these days, uh, that will need to go back to business. They will need a lot of maintenance, and I'm not just speaking about windows and uh, cleaning and etc. It's HVAC, it's uh, their actual, you know, ovens. Uh, uh, there, are, there are so many uh, uh, things that we identify in countries that actually out of the pandemic, like New Zealand and other places, that will definitely gonna happen in the States and Canada. Uh, this causing a queue. The queue basically means that, you know, uh, there is only one HVAC guy in the entire town and I need to wait for a week just to open my hotel. That's crazy, that's a huge loss of business. You, you guys as, as field service people need to identify the point where you see the economy starts blooming again and be at those businesses because people will get back to offices, businesses will start blooming again and you need to be there in order to serve them. The only way to do that is to keep in, uh, basically be on top of their mind. Uh, make sure they're still there, make sure you, you can serve them while it's challenging for them. Uh, and they will remember that, and they will. You'll be the first one, guy that will call uh, right at uh, their opening. And actually, that's a you know a pretty interesting sort of mindset and strategy of you know you're connected as a home service professional with your community. You might be able to see a little bit earlier than others when that corner is going to turn and things are going to reopen. But you also might be identify who might be most at need. You know, the hotel might not be thinking about the fact that their ducks have been sitting. And they're going to need to be, you know, cleaned and serviced or, you know, uh, you know, for plumbers, you know, buildings that no one, their water hasn't been going through because offices have been closed. I mean, here at our nice job office, I'm, I'm the only one that comes in here just to, <laughs> to do our podcast and make sure to, you know, turn some water on and, and keep the plants going as best I can. Um, but it's interesting you talk about that, that, that you as a home search special might be in the exact position to be the first call that they need and perhaps even before they need. Um is there any strategy you could recommend for someone that that thinks that they're on kind of the warning track or the bubbling point of of what perhaps they might want to try to do from a communication strategy wise to to be top of mind? So basically, what what we usually say is like uh, have the uh, the target date in in your mindset in some in some way. Uh, whether I'm calling a business owner, I'm I'm always trying to be nice and ask them how they do uh, and when they plan to uh, to open back again when the date is coming, when the date is, is the right one, of course. And, and then extrapolate back, say, okay, so you need to, in order to open, you need to do this and this and that. This means that 30 days before you open, you need to do a HVAC checkup, okay? So let me be the one for you or book it right now because otherwise uh, uh, there is there's gonna be a huge queue and you won't be able to open on time. And every day counts, right? Yeah. Uh, so I'm usually taking the value perspective uh, and, uh, and of course, extrapolating back to the maintenance period when you need to do, doing, do the maintenance. Uh, and it's always, again, with the customer in mind. So I'm doing that for you. I'm doing it in order for you to open in the right uh, uh, time. Uh, so let me help you by uh, uh, booking your spot. 
because I clearly see, I mean, more uh, businesses in need and I want to, uh, we want to make sure that you're going to open on time. Yeah, that's, man, I, it's, uh, I never really thought about thinking of, of that position that service professionals are going to end up in is, you know, there's going to be a, a, a bigger need. I mean, I knew obviously once things kind of got back up and running, there, there'd be the, maybe a little bit of a, a bump, but yeah, no, they, they, there's a chance that in some communities, it's going to be not an ideal position. It sounds weird to say that, but there's a, an opportunity that's really on the doorstep there. Yeah. And, and, and things will, will get better for sure. I know it. Um, and you need to remember people stuck at home for a year or more or more, they will want to spend more money outside. They will want to go to restaurants, to hotel, they will want to go to vacations. And this means that those places will need service people ASAP. So once you see, you know, uh, uh, the vaccines or whatever works, uh, uh towards, uh, uh, you know, a better future, just pick up the phone. Keep in touch with your uh, customers. Make sure that they're aware of the timeline where they need to get the service and book them uh, beforehand. And this is the best way for you to prepare for uh, you know more technicians or just have your equipment ready for all these uh, uh, services. Yeah, it's 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 prepping prepping for the uh, the big show there. So if if you're if you're down now, there's not a lot of work right now. Do a little system work. Make sure you got you know proper tools, proper software, whatever you need, because uh, that that boom is is probably coming. Uh, Didi, I, I really appreciate the time. Uh, if anyone's listening, uh, watching uh, this conversation here, and either wants to learn more about you, get in touch with you, or kind of learn more about what what you're up to, uh, where where should we send them? What's the best way to either learn more about Didi Workies or or to get in touch with you guys? So best way to get in touch with me is basically LinkedIn. Just look for Didi Azaria. Um, work is it's just work is uh, it's work uh, fairly easy to get in touch with us. I mean, we offer a free trial. Uh, we have great partners like nice job. Uh, and, um, I guess that, uh, you're going to have a great experience like most of our customers do. Yeah, well, we appreciate it. And as you can see, if you're watching the video, uh, portion there, uh, over duty shoulder, life is hard, but, but work is easy. I, I love that. Um, Didi, thank you again, once again, for uh, the time, and I appreciate you coming on the show. Perfect. Thank you very much, and have an amazing day. Yeah, you have a great rest of your day, too. And for all of you that tuned in, thank you so much. Uh, I, I hope that you'll check out Didi and Workies. Uh, if you're not using Nice Job, check us out as well. But at the very least, as I said towards the top of the show, uh, I want to make sure you just take something from today and just try it out in your world, in your life, and see how it benefits you uh, as a business owner and a person. Uh, we're rolling right along here in season two. We'll have another episode for you next week. But until then, I want you to be healthy, I want you to be safe, and don't forget to have a little fun out there as well. Take care, everybody. Oh,